During the regular season, I am strapped to this house watching hockey every day. I watch as much of every game as I can. Now, in my announcement of Pionk's career altering contract, not really, two years, six million, a lot of people are like, Shannon doesn't know what he's talking about. He has no idea. You know what? Jacob Truba's overpaid. Let's get into why and why this was a fantastic deal for Winnipeg and I'll do my work. First off, Pionk has played a grand total of 101 games in the NHL. He's 23 years of age, 7 goals, 33 assists, and 40 points. Does he have things to work on defensively? Absolutely. Does he have time to do so? He's only 100 games into his career. Absolutely, he does. The statements of, oh, he should be a number 7 defenseman. He's not a top 4 defenseman. Last season, he had 21 minutes and 10 seconds of ice time per game for the New York Rangers. So, yes, he was. He was second on the Rangers behind Brady Shea. Brady Shea played more time, and Pionk had one more point than Brady Shea. So, the offense is there. Now, the biggest difference in going to Winnipeg is, the New York Rangers last year had 220, or 227 goals for 22nd in the NHL. Winnipeg, 272 goals for 7th in the NHL. So, Pionk, who may very well get special teams time for a team that's better with special teams in Winnipeg than the Rangers were last season, his points total has to go up. Has to go to, I would say, at least 35 points. Defense? Eh. You know, it, it it's something that can be taught at the NHL level. I have seen plenty of defensemen come in, and they were a nightmare defensively when they first joined the NHL. And I've seen players have miserable second seasons in the NHL. I remember Victor Hedman in his second year. Halfway through that second season, he looked like he needed some conditioning somewhere or something before he turned it on and got it all together before the end of that season. So Pionk's played a grand total of 101 games, 7 goals, 33 assists. That's not bad. It really isn't for a kid that was undrafted. And he's going to a situation where uh, Winnipeg is going to be counting on him to fill in for either Meyer's spot or to fill in for Truba. They're both top four positions. He's had uh, 22 minutes and 23 seconds of ice time in 2017-2018, which was only a 24-game tryout. But in those 24 games, he had... 14 points so or 28 games he had 14 points so let me just go ahead and change that because we're going to go oh, it's 28 games not 24 and and again i i know what pionk is i think people are overestimating truba 110 percent so he gets a seven year 56 million dollar contract because he had a career year 82 games eight goals 42 assists 50 points remember this is a much better team in Winnipeg for scoring goals than the one with the Rangers. And Truba buggered the Winnipeg Jets with, oh, isn't it icing? In the playoffs, right? So he stopped playing, St. Louis scores a goal, and Winnipeg loses the game. He was defensively a guy who had some issues for Winnipeg, and Winnipeg fans will tell you that. Now at age 23, the same age as Mr. Pionk is right now, uh, that was last season for Truba, so 2017-2018. 55 games played, 3 goals, 21 assists, 24 points. So he played 18 less games than Pionk, had one, 2 less points. But that's a key thing. The 2018-19 season is the first one that Jacob Truba played more than 65 games. He has had trouble staying healthy. So he has a healthy season. He puts up a 50-point season, which is 17 points higher than his career highest which was 33 points in 2016-2017, a season in which he played 60 games. Average ice time for Jacob Truba over his career, 22 minutes and 53 seconds. Time for Pionk, 22 minutes and 30 seconds. The concept that there's this gigantic gap between Truba and Pionk only exists through last season. And defensively, it's really not as wide as people think it is. 101 games in the NHL, 408. Trubas had an extra 300 games to get acclimated to the NHL game and figure it out. Pionk's going to a team where he will have the chance to score. He'll be in better opportunities to score with a better top six to pass to than he had with the New York Rangers last season. I know the Rangers are going to be better this year than they were last year. They have to be because they're spending to the cap. I'm telling you, Truba... During this season, there are going to be moments where Rangers fans are yelling and screaming, we paid $8 million for this guy, and if he can't replicate this 50-point season, if he retreats to 40, 45 points, 
And not only that, but if he retreats into the 30s because he's not able to stay healthy, he's missing a quarter of the season, that affects your bottom line as well. Pionk missed a grand total of nine games last year. So, again, the difference between Pionk and Truba, Truba makes eight million, Pionk makes three. So again, and I, you know, people are like, oh, Shannon didn't watch the Rangers last year. Yeah, I did. I watched, oh my God, I watched so much hockey last year. It's just every single day, I'm like, all right, there's a game on. What's on at 10 a.m.? Rangers and Philly. Oh, awesome. Cool. And then there's a game at 1, then there's a game at 4, then there's a game at 7. All right, so I'm just watching hockey for 12 and a half hours. I watch every game I can, and I watch as much hockey as I can. People that are ready to throw Pionk under the, under the bus and for being an absolutely terrible defenseman, fine. I, I can't convince people that that's not the case. But the numbers don't back it up. They absolutely don't. Unless Brady Shea, Kevin Shattenkirk, they're horrible as well. Because the numbers aren't that different. Yeah, you get into Corsi and Fenwick. Again, he's he was a rookie this year. By all accounts, a rookie only having played 28 games before this past season. The idea that somehow Truba's worth $8 million and Pionk's worth 3 That's why I'm saying the Jets saved themselves. Even if Pionk's more defensively a challenge than Truba, they save five million dollars that they can use to to distribute to Connor and to Line A, which they wouldn't have if they'd kept Truba. And not only that, but Truba was miserable in Winnipeg. And it seemed like Winnipeg was miserable with Truba. So the idea that this is somehow this huge gap between the two, I don't get it. And then you throw in the fact that over in the corner there's first round draft pick Ville Hinola who's already signed his entry-level contract with Winnipeg, if Hainola's at all ready for an NHL job this year on an entry-level contract, that's another, what, nine hundred twenty-five grand at most on your cap? The, the Winnipeg Jets did a very good job, and this is a good contract for a defenseman that I can't see how he doesn't at least get 35 points this year. And I'm telling you, the offense is there. I know he struggled. I know he was streaky. I also know he was virtually a rookie this year. People are just brutal. I, I honestly, the, the expectation that a kid is going to commit to the league and okay, now you have to be as good as Brian Leach was. You, you have to get that straightened out and, and okay, you're crap, you're gone. This, this is Phil Esposito thinking from Ranger days. This is not something that, that, that makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, you've got to give a defenseman a while. For instance, in Vancouver, Ben Hutton, yeah, was he defensively a challenge? Yes. Did it work out? I, In the end, no. But the Canucks gave him a chance, and I, I agreed with that because there was enough in Ben Hutton's game to say we'll give him a chance. The idea that Pionk is just a throw-in and he's a lousy, he's just, no, he's crap. I get it if Rangers fans feel that way. The numbers just don't back it up. So there you go. My opinion on Pionk, comparatively speaking with Truba, they're very similar here, and outside of the 50-point season for Truba, point scoring really hasn't been that big with Truba either. So, again, I like Pionk a lot. There's a lot of upside there. I think with Truba, I think he's probably about his peak. That being said, Truba is 24-25, right? So 24, I believe. Could he get better? Yes. But the idea that somehow he's fantastic and he's crap... And for the Jets, this move, just this change means they can keep the team together. That was the concern coming into this summer, and they did it. Truba gave them one team to be traded to, apparently. He said, I only want to go to the Rangers, and they managed to get back a defenseman and a first-round draft pick. Was it their own first-round draft pick that they foolishly gave up for Kevin Hayes? Yes, we can throw that in as well, but they, they righted their wrong, and... Uh, if they hadn't got that first round draft pick back, we would be talking about a shallower uh, prospect pool for them on the blue line. And uh, we would probably still be looking at Jacob Truba going to arbitration with the Jets and an ugly situation getting uglier. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. I have no problem describing why I have the opinion I do about players. And I don't just throw things out there. I have never said, I like this player or I don't like this player without actually having watched games and actually having followed their careers. He has work to do. 
he's not he hasn't won a Norris Trophy either. So the Truba for eight million to me is too much. I think Truba's overpaid. I think Pionk in this day and age, remember, Myers got got six million from Vancouver. And there's people that argue he's not a top four defenseman. He's number five guy. Fine. So three million compared to six. The market keeps going up. These these contracts are going to keep getting higher. Your league minimum is seven hundred thousand dollars. So honestly, to me it's a win. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. As always, I will always be willing to defend my my opinion on players. And uh, I yeah. I've always been willing to do that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. This is not done for argument's sake. For argument, it's done to show, hey, I, I follow players. I follow teams. And I, I really think the difference between these two players is really overblown. Um, and we'll see if I'm right this coming season. 110% could be wrong. Yep. But I think Pionk with a better offense in Winnipeg and just a, a, a better overall team. We can kind of agree that Winnipeg's likely the better team between they and the Rangers this season. His numbers should go up. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll talk to you again soon.